All right, we've done the spider loot box challenge. Now it's time for the stoat loot box challenge. And this is on the current version of the game. Um, and I haven't really been uh, posting any videos from it because of the sound effects. But um, it seems like it might be a while before I, <laughs> there's an update to, to uh, remove the sort of glass smashing noise, which uh, drives me crazy. So in the meantime, hopefully it's not too bad with no, um, no sound uh, from the game itself. But the, the challenge here is basically um, buy as many mar marmosets and pigs on turn turns one and two as possible, sell everything on turn three, and then just roll for stoat. And then by turn five, we want to have an entire team of stoats, at which point we'll sell them all, have a full team of one ones, and then try and win from there. So here you can see what happens. We end up with a whole load of gold, and we're just rolling for stoat. And... Um, you can see how quickly uh, I'm doing it because at this point, I don't know how many I've done. I mean, I stopped counting, but I probably have done over 100 attempts of this. And I'm actually going to show a couple of shorter uh, runs first, and then I'll show the, the, the final run at the end. I don't have enough gold there to buy the stoat. So it's pretty typical that you get to this point and you've only got two or uh, um, two stoats, maybe sometimes only one. And a lot of those runs just fizzle out. But here we luckily get uh, another one. And on, on turn five or six, if you don't have the full board of stoats and you roll down and um, you find one, uh, I think it's fair enough if you sell the other stoats in order to buy the the, the, the last one. Um, because otherwise you can spend an awful lot of time doing this and not getting to the stage where you actually can sell everything. So here you can see we're on turn six. We have the full team of one ones. And there were a few strategies at play. I thought muskox seemed like a really obvious choice. Um, but I also thought woodpecker toad was quite a good combo um, to try and potentially um, win some, some rounds, even despite having really bad health. And here we get the uh, betta fish in, and I just give the mus muskox the broccoli for a little bit of health because it's going to get a lot of attack and health from the trigger. So you can see what happens with Woodpecker Toad. And as a result of that, we're actually going to win. So although it seems like a dire situation where you have um, five 1-1 one, one units, you can actually you know, win on the turn that you get them. So I'm going to fast forward this one and we'll jump all the way to the end. This was, I don't know if this was my first or second nine wins, but turn 17, we've taken uh, the Muskox, Woodpecker and Toad all the way to the end. And... The weakness does a great work there, but unfortunately, it's uh, a team with clownfish and uh, and swan, and everything's level three, and we're just not gonna. We're actually not far off there. If the if the clownfish didn't have steak, it's a draw. But yeah, that was uh, tough to take. But at turn seventeen, it's it's so difficult to expect to have any chance to win. So here's another one where I actually get starfish. And starfish is a pretty good get, um, especially if you get two. As in here, you can see the second one. So we can combine them and instantly get level two starfish. And this time it's actually on turn five with three hearts intact. So, um, and we level into platypus. The starfish initially is not actually particularly useful um, because you're giving buffs to the, the one one units. And when you combine stuff with it from the shop, you're gonna lose those buffs anyway but it's really more about how good it is after that. And um, another thing you'll notice doing this kind of challenge is that you're losing so many early rounds that by the time you get your team going, you're generally going against much weaker opposition. So it gives you more of a chance, really. So you can see, I, I fast forward this one, I got another starfish there, and eventually we get the level three. Again, we've got muskox going. And I've still got the flycatcher. This one's only turned 16, nine wins, again, I'm delighted to get this far. I think my team is much better in this one than it was in the last uh, in the last one. And we get matched with this team that has a tiger snake right at the back. Not quite sure why. Oh, I guess it's because of the rooster. They want all three uh, rooster spawns. But of course, the tiger snake, even though the... Uh, yeah, it's a draw. <laughs> I think uh, if I'd had... If I'd had... Um, would it have been equipment on the skunk? I might have uh, won that, but yeah. Uh, now we go to turn 17 and 
um, you know, not having multiple 50-50s at this point is just really painful and you can see what happens. We get matched with the generic jellyfish bison and, um, you know, their their equipment at the back. Which actually, again, it's pretty close, but, you know, you just not having the equipment on the whole team uh, made such a difference there. But anyway, this is my... Uh, this is the one I'm going to show the full run of. And you can perhaps see immediately how this run is different to the others. And that is we got double clownfish plus there was a clownfish in the shop. And being able to immediately level stuff on, on turn five, you know, get a level two tier three. There are so many that are super strong. Clown, um, there's also um, uh, muskox, obviously, and capybara. And you know, if you even if you have three one-one capybaras, you're buffing the shop so quickly that you can um, you know you can recover their stats. So here we get another clownfish as well on top of that, and with the stats from the betta fish, that's actually going to be good enough here to uh, beat this team. And um, I think we're going to go for double clownfish, which is um, pretty grotesque, but I didn't feel too bad doing it in this challenge since it's pretty difficult and I'd spent, I don't know how many hours I spent on it at this point, but it's a lot. <laughs> um, so I think here we'll take the toad. Toad is one of the few sprites that I've changed to the new version. It just uh, looks so much nicer with the sort of, um, I don't know if you would call it sad face because it's kind of smiling, but also looking down. But um, we get matched with an opposing clownfish team and it's easy to beat that one. And yeah, I, you could combine the clownfish together here for a level three, but I'd rather keep them separate because you get more buffs uh, as a result. And I think about it for a while here and I think I buy the blob and then do I use the chocolate on the blob? Or maybe I, yeah, well, haven't decided at this point. We get another clown. And I think now I should just uh, sell the crow and then put the clownfish in. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I guess I'm going to go for a le separate level three and level two. This run just happened earlier today, but I guess I've played so many games at this point, I can't remember exactly what's happening. Luckily, we go against this team where they're investing absolutely everything into the Tamarin. Um, although I guess they also had uh, three hearts, so they weren't too worried about it. And Crow, and I think I I saved this for for the uh, turn nine level up. Um, now I'm checking the pack to see what I could get this turn. And I decide in the end, yeah, we're just going to wait. And we'll go for triple Clownfish. And we also get the pill for the Blob, which is incredible. So um, we could actually, I think here, almost get two level three clownfish and maybe that is what's going to happen um another team that actually is using stoat you'd very rarely see stoat this late um you know i've, I've done the uh, i've already done the um triple stoat video where i kept it right to the end uh, right till turn 11 and i'll uh, link that in the description so here we're going to go for the double level three clown and i think do I take uh, Stego here? Yeah, instead of going full greed, I could have leveled the, the other clownfish there, but instead we'll go for the Stego. Um, Crane is another possibility because Crane has terrible starting stats, at least in the health department, but with a couple of levels from the clownfish, it's going to get huge. Uh, here's a level three frilled dragon team that's made it quite late. You don't see that too often, so we beat them. And now we're going to go, oh no, not quite yet. Oh yes, it is. Turn turn 10, level the clown. So now, now we've got uh, two level twos and a level three. And um, I am going to combine them together. I'm just, just trying to think, you know, should I freeze the uh, dragon or freeze the eagle there? And I decide that what I'm going to do is put strawberry on uh, the front clownfish in the hopes of getting Velociraptor. So a lot of the time, I think that's probably one of the biggest problems I have when I'm doing these types of runs is that I'm not really planning ahead, I'm just playing. And you can see here the difference it makes when you actually think about you know, what your team needs in order to win. And 
Um, I think Velociraptor giving uh, coconut at the at the start of battle big makes a, a, a huge difference. Um, and here we get uh, again Velociraptor is another unit with terrible starting stats, but that's going to be uh, remedied very quickly by um, a couple of chocolates, and there we get one. And I'm I'm leveling the uh, Velociraptor. Um, although it's generally beneficial to have lower attack on the Velociraptor so it goes last, I want it to be level 2 so that I can give the second clownfish another strawberry. Um, and then that will mean also that the uh, Stego is guaranteed to buff one of the weaker units. So we get another win here. And now we get the chocolate. And what's that going to do? 17, 16. That's not too bad. And then we really kind of want these Stego buffs to land on the uh, on the Velociraptor. So what I do here is I sell the Toad. Um, without I don't really have any snipes or um, uh, you know no woodpecker, no uh, no links or anything like that. Both which would have been very useful for um, uh, triggering the Toad. But instead we'll take the second Stego and put Pepper on it to guarantee that the um, the buffs land on either the Clownfish or the uh, the raptor and then we'll try and level up the stego so here we get the uh, coconut which results in the trade there and uh, we beat that team and I think um, yeah I'm just now going to look for the stego level and we do find the strawberry and now I just yeah there's the chocolate although I'll wait till next turn and now we're we're on eight wins and we've got three hearts still and it level two <laughs> tiger leopard and yet the coconut is going to be good enough to beat them so here we are again nine wins and yeah definitely over a hundred attempts to get to this point i would say um shame i shame i didn't count them but you know when you're getting into that number of reps it just becomes incredibly frustrating and Keeping keeping notes is not the first thing on your mind. So here, I think I'm going to combine the stegos. I'm just looking for something to to put in in uh, the the last slot. So we combine the stegos, get the level up, and I think I buy the eagle and then put the uh, put the stake on it to. Okay, I, I I'm I'm going to go for the level first instead of putting the stake on it. So here it goes. Can this team win on turn 14? And we face a 50-50 buffalo, but the coconut comes in so clutch. And the tiger snake just misses killing the clownfish by 1 HP, and the raptor's going to clean up. So there we go. After a, a marathon, it finally got the stoat loo box challenge over the line. Give it a try yourself, although bear in mind it might consume a lot of your time.